I've always been very focused, very ambitious. I've known from a, a young age, I've known from, I used to be a tennis player when I was younger, when I had a bad shoulder injury and couldn't make it as a tennis player. I thought the next best thing is to talk about it, to write about it, to, to be an, a sports journalist. And as soon as I decided that, that was when I was out in the, in the US at, um, on a college tennis scholarship, as soon as I figured that out, I made that my aim, my goal, and I was so focused, so single-minded on achieving that. My Sky contract is effectively 30 weeks a year, um, and I split my time between the London studio and travelling overseas, so travel all around Europe, but also to the United States as well. So I'd say probably about 20 weeks in London, 10 weeks on the road. So not really a, a typical week, but the tournaments are Thursday to Sunday, and the hours vary greatly. So a lot of irregular hours, which is tough, a lot of traveling, so there's a jet lag comes into it. So it's a, it's a full on job. I love it, it's brilliant. But with the business that I have as well, it quite often means that I work most weekends and then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I'm doing my other side business exclusive golf. So I tend to work a lot. We do a lot of US golf coverage, so for example the time difference means that we can be on air here in the UK at sort of 8 till 11 o'clock at night um, to fit in time with, with the US time difference. So quite often I will have say the day at home to, to do other work or to prep and to get ready and then head into Sky to be on air from about 8 till 11, 8 till midnight. But we can then be doing tournaments in Asia, so that's middle of the night so we can be up at sort of one two in the morning on air at four o'clock so it totally varies so sky predominantly is thursday to sunday so wednesday is normally my prep day but in studio or on location thursday to sunday quite often exclusive golf is run monday to wednesday so the business i love what i do working for sky i love the presenting side of it passionate about sport so it's kind of it is a dream job for me but on the flip side I wanted to kind of work for myself as well. I've always been entrepreneurial, always been very creative, had lots of ideas, quite visionary. What could I do that would work alongside my Sky job? So I set up Exclusive Golf about four or five years ago, really as a hobby. And I still kind of, it's still a startup in a way. I still kind of term it like that because it's always run alongside my day job. So Exclusive Golf, in a nutshell, provides money can't buy experiences for high net golfers. So that is the tagline really, is money can't buy. So if you're a, a golfer, you want the most incredible travel experience or you want something that you can't ordinarily get, Exclusive Golf will be able to facilitate that for you. A client wanted a, something wow for her husband's 50th birthday. So she so I don't know what, I, I, you know, he's a mad king golfer, come up with something special. So we organised him for, to caddy at the Masters Par 3 tournament on the Wednesday before the tournament. So just the most incredible, for a golf fan, the most incredible experience. Running on from that, we then launched Exclusive Life, so to cater for our clients in other areas. Mainly sport, but whatever they want to do, we can access. So it's a it's a concierge service if you like wait my business partner is very good he handles things on a day-to-day -day basis but a lot of the leads and contacts are mine you know i work in golf i'm meeting people all the time players sponsors corporates ben logistically will handle a lot of the day-to-day -day, but i still can't hand it over and just let him run with that i'm, I'm still very hands-on monday to wednesday so the battle for me is always the work-life balance and it's always the balance between the exclusive golf and exclusive life and Sky and that's the biggest thing I struggle with but it's just trying to make that work because when I don't work for Sky anymore maybe when the TV career is over I want to be able to work on those businesses full-time and can step into them and lead them and hopefully down the line sell them and retire. Sleep's a really tricky part of my job. If I'm working sort of in the evenings, I can come home at sort of 12, one in the morning. It's really hard just to go straight to sleep because you've got the adrenaline, you're tired, you're almost overtired. So quite often I come back and maybe have a cup of tea or just chill, just sort of get a bit of me time and then go to sleep, maybe two, three in the morning and then try and sleep into a decent time. If I'm doing the early mornings, 
You try and go to bed at eight, nine o'clock in the evening, try and get at least two or three hours, but it's hard. I'm not an early riser, so for me, I much prefer the evenings, but sleep is definitely, it's a big issue. We have fantastic makeup artists at Sky, so I feel quite lucky in that I don't normally have to worry about it myself. So they, I think certain colours on your eyes, I've got green eyes, so I tend to sort of go for like a blue eyeliner, that's always quite good. Nothing too heavy if your eyes are tired. You know, late nights, early mornings, the concealer to cover the eye bags is, is always good. That's kind of the, the big makeup trick. And water, can't stress that enough, it, it's, it's so important for your skin as well. The trick to kind of stay alert and be focused even when you haven't had any sleep is probably the hardest part of my job to be honest. I think the key for me, what I try and do is, is sleep as much as I can. If I need a power nap in the afternoon, I try to, but then you've got to time it right. So maybe 20, 30 minutes. If you sleep for too long in an afternoon, you can just end up feeling awful. I try to eat really well, drink lots of water is kind of my secret trick. I know everybody says it, but it's, it, it does work. I think if you can eat well and drink lots of water, that really helps. And exercise obviously as well. And even if you're really exhausted, trying to do something light, so swim or dog walk. So for breakfast, I tend to start with porridge, porridge and fruit. Um, used to have some kind of syrup um, but obviously everything now is <laughs> sugar's bad um, and even the healthy sugar sort of alternatives aren't good so literally it's plain porridge and fruit so bananas obviously really good handful of nuts that type of thing um, tend to sort of make a juice for say mid-morning lunch try and get as much protein as possible so scrambled eggs and um, smoked salmon is always really good then evenings jacket potato if I'm at work sometimes if it it, if you're on the fly at work it's quite hard to eat well so soup or jacket potato or if I'm at home chicken vegetable salad that type of thing I do have a sweet tooth so I always have to guard against that but I've always been really active so my weight does stay quite constant if I don't exercise I lose obviously you lose tone but I've never really been overweight because I think I've always been sporty so I've always managed to sort of keep it down guilty pleasure would be cookies like I said I've got a massive sweet tooth so it's just trying to curb that. And I'm, but I'm a big believer in life, you know, you, I don't think I have many vices. I'm not a big drinker. I don't smoke. I sort of lead quite a healthy, clean living life. And if you can't allow yourselves, you know, some nice treats on a Sunday, a Monday, end of a long, hard week, then that's a sorry state. So definitely, <laughs> definitely something sweet. But I'd say probably the biggest motivation, she'll love me saying this, is my mum. She worked in TV anyway, so she's kind of taught me a lot of the things you need to know, like being thick-skinned, not letting things get you down, following your dreams and ambitions. She's really helped me on the, sort of the mental side, if you like, the psychological side of work. Um, the one thing she always said to me growing up, put, if, if, you, if you want to do it, your mind, put your mind to it and you can do it. You, with, your, with a strong mind, you can achieve anything. I think you have to be thick skinned because as a woman working in that environment, you if you make a mistake, it's almost like you, people think that's because you're female, you don't know enough about that particular sport. And I think coming in when I got the job at Sky, I was always very conscious of making sure that I know absolutely everything. I always prepare well, I always research, I never want to be sort of found out lacking for knowledge. You just have to be thick skinned, but if you, give people no reason to question you or criticise you, then you'll be fine. I do play golf, obviously golf is my job, with TV and with exclusive golf. When I get time off, I do like to try and play as much as I can, but the issue is time. Golf takes you know, four or five hours, it can be a full day. When the weather's beautiful, there's nothing better than going out with friends or family and, and having a game of golf. The face of golf has changed. I think it's becoming a lot more popular with women now. A lot of my friends, 10 years ago you used to think it was the most boring game on earth now they love it it's also physically better for you than you think you end up walking on average about five miles for a round of golf so it's a nice gentle exercise if you can you know it's a very frustrating game if you can go out there and keep calm and keep peace it's quite hard to explain but i kind of always i kind of feel at peace on the golf course and i've always thought of it's quite a spiritual game it's quite a good way of clearing your head and and also teaches you things, teaches you patience, perseverance, keeping a good attitude. So I think skills that are good in life. I think stress is, dealing with stress is a big part of what we do. You know, we are, we have to perform week in, week out. 
and that's that's a hard thing when you're working long hours late nights sometimes you go into work and you don't feel that up for it you don't feel like performing in front of the camera but you have to and that's just experience you have to find ways to sort of to make yourself able to perform and I think quite often when the red light comes on you do it's, it's just what you do I actually saw a talk with Ruby Wax at a mind, uh, mindfulness festival wilderness here in Oxfordshire and she was just sort of selling the virtues of mindfulness saying how much it had helped her overcome depression and, and anxiety and following that I bought a book um, it's called Finding Peace in a Frantic World written by Mark Williams so I've read the book sort of cover to cover quite I mean, I'm not a big reader of books so I read it quite quickly and and it kind of all sunk in. Red then put the CD on, downloaded it to my iPod, and I listen, try and listen to it every day. I don't, some days I miss, but last thing before I go to bed, I'll just try and put that on 10 minutes, and it just helps to de-stress and put yourself in that position. And you do notice it over weeks and months, and it kind of gives you a, a sense of peace and a calming influence, because life for me rushes past at 100 miles an hour and mindfulness I've only started it recently and I'm not proficient by any stretch of the imagination but it just helps keeps me focused and centered and just almost stops like it stops life for 10-15 minutes you're just there just being and I think it's it's a buzzword at the minute it's very popular and it, no wonder I think it's amazing the hardest thing is the balance you know how do you fit everything in life you want um, you map it out. I'm a big believer in to-do lists. At the end of the day, you've got, if you write it all down, it gets in your head and stick to it. So make sure you've got time for your family, your friends, your exercise, you've got to have me time in there. But if it's your passion, you'll make it work. As a human being, you try and live your life the right way. You try and be nice, you try and be respectful, you try and make time for the people that matter, the people you love. In business, it's kind of everything against that. You have to be ruthless, you have to be determined, you have to be ambitious. And I think I'm all of those things, but I'm also, I think, a nice, good person. You don't have to be horrible or nasty, you don't have to do things in the wrong way to get to the top in business. I just think it's understanding that. There are certain things you have to do to achieve in business, but you don't have to be cruel, you don't have to stab people in the back. So irrespective of whether it's a male-dominated world or or, or whatever area you work in. Be tough, know exactly what you want, and don't flinch on that path you set out to achieve. Stick to it and just work hard. I think women need to be probably more vocal about what they want. Um, I, I've probably been accused, I'm quite, I can be quite pushy. <laughs> um, because if I want something, I will go after it. But then also on the flip side, if I wasn't so pushy and wasn't so motivated and focused and ambitious, I wouldn't have got where I am today, I don't think. So it's that balance. But I think it's great and I think more women should be like that. And I think they are. I think, I think it's changing, but women should not be afraid to say and go for what they want. Being fit for success for me, it's kind of a holistic approach. It's everything. It's making sure your mind is in the right place. So whether that be however you want to do that, your relaxation time, mindfulness, meditation, whatever, being in a happy place, being with people you love and people who make you happy and uplifting. Also eating well, fitness is key. And if you can do all those things, then together you are a complete person that helps you achieve more. If all those, you know, if you're physically fit and mentally fit, that's gonna make you more proactive and go on to achieve great things.